God alone. There's none beside you, Jesus. Have your way, Lord, in this place. You are the author and the finisher of our faith, God. You are able to do far exceedingly, abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Let there be a manifestation of your glory here this morning. Let the power of your glory, God, be made manifest in our praise and our worship, God. We push back every work of the enemy, God, in the name of Jesus. For you have not given us the spirit of fear, but a power, love, and that of a sound mind. Hey, God, hallelujah, let your glory, God, move upon this place. Those that are watching online, they may feel the anointing right now. We give you praise. Hallelujah. All lift up your voices, all you people, and worship God in this place. Lift up your voices and worship God. Press in. Press into his presence. Press into the glory of God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Let's give God a round of applause right there where you are. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody. We'd like to welcome you to our 11.30 service here this morning. Those of you who are watching online, join with us as we worship and praise God. Hallelujah. Let's give God glory in this house in Jesus' name. Come on. Anybody here come to see the light of Jesus? Hallelujah.
God's getting ready to do something mighty in this place. Come on, come on, this thing that you're going through right now, it won't last forever. God's getting ready to turn it around. Don't you know when God does something, he puts all his word and his power behind it, and that which you are struggling with, God can turn it around. Tell your neighbor, turn it around, God. Hallelujah, yes, Jesus. Yes. Say with me. This won't last. said God is greater than anything that there are no weapons formed against us that shall prosper because God is bigger and greater than anything come on hallelujah Jesus. this is a new song clap your hands like this
rise for a moment. Let's make a worship. Say it again, say, for you are great. Thank you, Jesus. You are great. Anything you are great. Say it one more time. You are greater, yes. For you are greater than anything. No music. For you are greater than anything. One more time, say. For you are than anything. Come on, we'll sing it till we believe it. You are greater than anything. Come on, say it again. For you are. <laughs> Let hell know that you are, he's greater. Ah, greater. Come on, all the sisters, all the ladies. You are. <laughs> all the sisters, come on, all the sisters, all the ladies, come on. You are. Than anything. Come on, all the brothers, come on. I want to hear all the men, all the men. For you are. For you are greater. Last time, everybody. Then anything, everybody said, everybody say, yeah. For you are greater. Over the years in our life, we go through many stages in life. You're a child, teen, young adult, and into adulthood. You bring stuff along with you from even when you're a kid. Some people got still got their dolls and, and toys and, and binkies and stuff that they had from a kid, but you've accumulated stuff. And that's that's life, even in the spirit. We accumulate stuff of troubles and strongholds and, and brokenness and all those things. And it clutters our life if we don't allow to give it to God. Psalms 55, 22 says, cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain you. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. We need to make room for God. Come on, tell your neighbor, tell you, need to, you need to make some room for God. You got to clean out the clutter, clean out the clutter. All the graffiti that's written against you on the walls of your soul, ask God to cleanse it. Come on, clear, cleanse out the clutter. Get the clutter out of the way. Make room for Jesus. Lift up your hands and worship God. Hallelujah.
blood for your redemption draweth nigh. Oh, yes, Jesus. Step in, we step in, step in the glory. To do whatever you want to. Yes, Jesus. To do whatever you want. Right there, raise your hand and sing with us. And I will make room for you. For you, Lord. To do whatever you want to. To do whatever you want. Sing again, I will make room, yeah. stuff so you can clean it all up again. Say, I'm giving you room, Lord. And I will make room for you. Oh, yeah. To do whatever you want. Whatever you want to, Jesus. To do whatever you want. Last time and I will make room. And I will make room for you. to God and shout hallelujah. Come on, give him the highest praise. Come on, shout hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Give him the highest praise. He's worthy. He's worthy. Yes, he is. Lift up your voices right there. Come on, tell him God. Praise the Lord. Come, raise your hands and speak in tongues. You know that, you know I'm going to go there because I live there. I, I go there because I live there. Did you know that praise? You know, when Abram... When Abraham built uh, an altar, um, the Bible says, obviously, the Lord waited. I mean, he waited on the Lord. I think praise and worship is that praise is, it, 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 you know, let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. So we offer up the sacrifices of praise, which is our most reasonable sacrifices. You can't give him more than what, you know, he, he, he's just, he's all that we need. 
Watch, watch, watch. He builds an altar, and then the Bible says that he shoes the fowls of the air. Means that God kind of, you know, he, the, Abraham says, I'm not leaving this place of worship. See, because the word is coming. That's why. That's why I love worship because, amen, I'll, I'll pick my little spot and there God commands the blessing. You can sit there and worship yourself. Amen. When we worship ourselves, it's like, it's like armpits without any deodorant. It just stinketh by now. Praise the Lord, somebody. I want my praise to be a sweet aroma unto the Lord. Now you're you're sitting by someone that you feel comfortable with. Hold that person's hand. If you don't want to, I got it. Come on. Just, just, if you feel comfortable. But listen to me, y'all. God's teaching you how to prophesy. I declare by the power of God that the bless, the word that is coming tonight, that it, it is like a table that has been set before me in the presence of my enemies. It is there, God, by design to feed me body, soul, and spirit. Let it, God, be a living, breathing word. Right now, in Jesus' name, now praise him. Come on, praise him. Throw your hands. Amen. You may be seated. I can't, I'm going to get out of the way because I um, just can't help myself sometimes. We heard a powerful word this morning. I love, I love this man. I love his spirit. You've heard the story how God brought us together. God brings people together. It's called spiritual networking. The Bible says uh, that all good gifts comes from the Father of life. Did you know that you're lifting whatever it is that you're doing in life, it takes people to get somewhere? Do you know that? Even the Bible says that where there are two or three gathered in my name, I will be there. So you should not isolate yourself from the community of God's people. Because, amen, there you're blessing God. Come as a blessing. Anyways, uh, the first lady, Joshua did a phenomenal, Pastor Joshua, well, my co-pastor, amen, Joshua also, he ministered a powerful word last Wednesday. I really enjoyed that in Jesus' name. And more so, I, I, I mean, it's just good. It's just good stuff. I love it. And the first lady will be speaking on Wednesday, y'all. Mama. You might get a spanking. In my house, this is a compliment to her. In my house, you can't, she'll look at you and say, why are you crying? You know what to do. I said, let me cry for a little while, praise the Lord. <laughs> Just a little bit, praise the Lord. Amen. No, what it is is that God has pushed her in these levels of authority. It just, just she knows how to stand. And I just want to thank God for her. And I just thank God for my family. They've been doing all levels. They've been doing ministry since they've been in their mother's womb. Um, and, and with that comes a lot. You know, church PK suffer sometimes. They suffer more from people than they do the devil. Sometimes that's what it is, you know. They start, you know, not you, praise the Lord. I know you love my family. If you don't, there's a church down the street. I'm good. I really am good. God will replace you tenfold. <laughs> Sorry. 
for your health and safety, we do need to pray for Bishop Hudson. Uh, he, he needs to get out of the hospital. I did visit him. Um, he is not nowhere near where he needs to be. And Sister Judy obviously is really in dire need for a miracle. She's desperate because, as you know, when people go to the hospital, they can't see their loved one. And that in itself is a tremendous torment in her life. And so we need to seek the sovereignty of God in Jesus' name. We're going to pray before I'm going to get out of the way. But that, that many of you have been doing, you, you've been doing due diligence when you're sick. There's a lot of people that called in and says, Pastor, I've got, the, I've got some sniffles. I've got this. I'm going to do the right thing. Stay home. Um, I'll be checking if you're watching online. If not, I'm, I, always, I always get a kick out of people who says, well, I was watching online. Did you know that we can see if you're watching? But they all have a comeback. They say, well, I watch it during the week. Amen. I'm just having fun. Praise the Lord. Uh, Daniel's fast. Say Daniel's fast. Um, I want you to finish off the week with a strong, um, just discipline yourself. Uh, do a three-day, two-day, one-day. Don't don't lay back. If you got off, you broke it off, get started again. That's myself, my wife, and my family. Leadership Banquet Sunday, January 30, 2022. Leaders, please check your inbox and RSVP accordingly. Please do diligently. We do this only once a year. We want you to be there. Unshakable Women of Vision Breakfast and Bible Study, Saturday, February 12th at 10.30 a.m. Ladies, come and enjoy an afternoon and a wonderful fellowship, delicious food. Man, the ladies, when they get together, man, they like, they, they spoil themselves. They get tired of cooking for their husbands. So they're like, we're going to spoil ourselves. And I, I show up, you know, I sneak in, I stay in my office, and they bring me food. I'm like, Lord, I'm missing. I know how to show up when it's time. I'm never late for dinner. Amen. Delicious food and powerful word from our first lady. Uh, contactless registration. And contactless. Contactless. Registration is now available. Ladies, your registration is your RSVP. So register today. Say today. There's a table out there, please. Prayer and fasting, as you know, we're here. We're expecting you. We want you to show up. Find a place where you can pray. Uh, you have to understand something about prayer. Just a little commercial here. Anytime that God blesses you with anything that is good, and a lot of good things come from the Lord, so spiritually, physically, you know, God touches you at all levels. He's a holistic God. He's a merciful God. All good gifts come, right? But you also need to say prayer to the grace to sustain that which is good. It's God, give me the grace to sustain. Because sometimes when we're in trouble, we pray, God, help me, Jesus, help me. You know, we all behave that way. But can you sustain prayer after the deliverance? Say grace to pray. Uh, so please visit uh, Redeemer Ministries. Uh, uh, get in contact with the, uh, praise the Lord, the, uh, um, the schedule. I want to have a praise for you. Brother Alex, raise your hand. Alex, right? Raise your hand. He went through cancer. He just, I went back there and he told me, Pastor, he goes, I am better than ever. He goes, I've got a little season to go. Yeah. Yeah. Signs and wonders. Uh, we will be having our signs and wonders. Please don't forget this box. You need to continue to pray and deposit your petitions here. And we're going to continue to have our, uh, our, our, praise the Lord, our miracle services. Say tithes and offerings. Uh, say, I'm saved. That's why I give. Man, it's going to be good today, praise the Lord. It's going to be so good. We're going to just have to pack up and go home. Um, you can do it to secure give. Please pray, stream, please come. Vision app, kiosk, as you know, in person, by mail. My wife and I and my family were tithers. We've always been, we tithe to this church. We believe, we, I can't stand up here and declare something to you for you to be obedient and I will be disobedient. I'm not that crazy. I fear the Lord. Uh, and so I just want to let you know that what I'm asking you to do is what God is ask, telling you to do. Amen. And so you're supposed to tithe into the house of the Lord that feeds you. Would you please stand? Please stand. Uh, those ladies back there, 
um, amen, are waiting for you because we are moving quickly to a cashless society system. Most people are let me, I mean, we don't carry cash. I seldom do. But I have that wonderful credit card, debit card. I love to go back there and still give some more. Praise the Lord. Because God is a good God. So please, um, those of you that are watching, this house has been a, has been a blessing to you. And we are growing abroad. Amen. Uh, just sow seed into this house. You can text it to 84321 in Jesus' name. Let's give unto the Lord. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I change to be, yeah. I'm free indeed. In Christ I'm free indeed. No chains are holding me. It's who I change to be. Help me say now. I'm free indeed in Christ. In Christ I'm free no chains. Look at your neighbor and say, I want to have some church, man. I, I, want to, I want to let it all go. I want the Holy Ghost to have his way. I don't want to have any inhibitions. I want to let go and let God. I want God to do something phenomenal in me and in you. You may be seated. God bless you. Father, we bless you. We thank you for your excellent glory and for your goodness. We count it a privilege to come before you and to say grace and to seek your face. We ask you, Father, to plead. We plead before you, Father, to lead, save this nation. Spare us from the works of darkness. Spare us from the evil that's coming upon the land. And Father, we pray that you would comfort your people just as you did with the people of Israel. You gave them the land of Goshen while you sent the plagues in Egypt. I pray, Father, that you would move upon this, your people. Stir their hearts. Put a fire in them. Kendo, roho shai, vehendo bohai. Ronoho sendehekai. Rohondoho sobai. You're a mighty God. We thank you for giving us your ear and having given us the privilege to seek your face. We thank you for this time of fasting and prayer in this house, that you've heard our prayer. I pray, Father, that you would light up the courage in the hearts of this, your people. Let us hear your word and sharpen our ears to hear the speaking of the Spirit. And let those that have an ear hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We bless you for this great man of God, great, great man of God. Bless him with all blessing. Surround him and keep him. Bless his wife, his family, 
this ministry, this work. Bless those that bless him and curse those that curse him. Let this your people leave this place rejoicing at thy word forever. Amen. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together holy, all together wonderful to me. So here I am. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. One more time, y'all say it. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. And here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together holy, and all together wonderful to me. And I'll never know how much it costs to see my sin upon that cross. And I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin upon that cross. So here I am to worship, here I am to bow, and here I am to say that you're mine. Come on, people, come on. We're all together worthy and all together. You're all together. Come on, one more time. Let's lift that voice. So here, here I am to and here I am to and here I am to say that. Sing it, sing it. Sing it. Wonderful to me. I'll never know. I won't know. Look, and I'll never know how much it cost to see my sin up on that cross and I'll never know how much Lord have mercy to see mm. here I am to words here I Lord 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 Oh, I feel a breakthrough in the spirit. Y'all don't know. God's about to do something for you. God's about to do something crazy. It's, I feel a breaking of some fallow ground. I feel the ground breaking. I feel somebody's coming out of addiction right now. God's about to break some shackles off of your life. It's been holding you too long. Alcoholism is coming off of your life right now. It's coming off. It's coming off. It's coming out. I feel a purging. Ramaha, hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Woo! Come on. I'm used to preaching before folk that's ready for God to do something. Clap your hands, open your mouth. Clap your hands, open your mouth, and give God a shout. Clap your hands and open your mouth. Clap your hands, oh ye people, and give God a shout of glory. Clap your hands and give God a shout. Glory unto his name. Oh, 
Shalamaya. Oh, I feel it, I feel it, I feel it. Oh, yeah. Well, I get fired up. I love the animal kingdom, and I learned a lot of principles from them. That when the mother bird returns with the worm in her mouth, it's usually the loudest chick that gets the worm. It's usually the loudest chick with the biggest mouth that gets the worm. And when folk come in church, they just sit here like the little quiet bird, like you don't have a need in the world. Like everything is already provided. I don't have a need for nothing. But even if I had everything, I still need more of God. I need, a, I need more of his grace. I need more of his power. I need more of his presence in my life. I will shout unto the Lord. Well, we're working for the word, Lord. I, I know it's a touchy thing sometimes. You and I, as people of God, have got to get involved in politics. I'm sorry, I, 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 know, I know this is a touchy thing because the church has been taught by Jezebel to remain out of politics while she take all the political power. Jezebel is a political, spiritual figure in the Bible. She married a man who was a king, that's the political. And then she took over the spiritual by demanding a fast. Oh, you call a fast, folk thank you the Holy Ghost now. Well, she called a fast and all of Israel respected her word as a prophetic word. So she called herself a prophetess. And she took over the political and the spiritual. And whether we know it or not, Jezebel is running the show around the world. They're coming with the one world order, the reset and all this stuff. The empty shelves that you're getting ready to see. Y'all think they're empty now. But China now is shutting down the chain supply. And that's going to now cause a great problem on our grocery shelves. We warned y'all, don't let that demon in the White House. We warned you. And so, I'm asking for your help. I'm running for Congress. God told me to run. God told me to run. And I'm running. And we had a song. It's an old school song. I'm running, running, running. I can't tear it. Running, running, running. I can't tear it. I'm running, running, running. I can't tear it. I'm running up the king's highway. That's an old church. Uh, y'all, y'all too young to know about that, man. But I'm running, and, and I am going to get in there, and I'm going to vote for freedom. You need freedom. You need individual rights. You need, the, you need the freedom to start a business. You need the freedom to, to buy your dream home and to support your children, to know what's going on and being taught in the schools. They can't teach Satanism and different types of sexuality without your authority. Hello, come on, people. Come on, people. They, they didn't do this when, my, when, I was a, when I was a teenager, when I was a kid coming up in elementary. My mom would go in there and beat up everybody. See, we need more mamas and dads to get into the school. How many of you fathers have seen your children's report card? How many of y'all look at the report card and sign it? Oh, that's, I'm proud of y'all. That's, that's really great. I can count on my one hand the times my father looked at my report card. He didn't have to because all my mom said was, I'm going to show your dad. Yes, ma'am, man. <laughs> what you want me to do? But we do need fathers involved in their children's education. Get involved. There was a story out of, uh, I think it was uh, Chicago, where a, a group of black fathers got together and they was doing a bunch of fighting and all kinds of stuff at the school. Those black fathers formed a union and went in there and shut all of that down. Your presence as a man is just, it brings authority with it. It brings authority with it, so get involved. I'm running against a man who used to be the mayor of Phoenix and he is uh, he's voted to support uh, the empty shelves the high inflation um, 
the, the passing of a bill that would allow an eight-year-old to get a sex change without the parents' permission. It, listen, this stuff is true. It sounds like it's a, it's a, it's a false story, but this stuff is, is crazy. See, Satan is, is perverted. And when Satan gets in people's heart, they do crazy things. This is why, as a Christian, I think it's insanity for us to sit back and say, we're not involved in politics, so we'll leave this to the children of the devil to make decisions that govern our lives. Don't we need men and women of God to go in there and stand for God and stand for what's right? So please, don't be that Christian. God doesn't want, God said, occupy till I come. That means we must take over territories. And, you see, you and I are going to get a second chance on this life physically. We're going to get a second chance on this life. When Jesus comes back to the earth, we will live here with him a thousand years on this earth physically. And when that happens, he's going to need people to run politics, to govern, need people to run businesses, people to run schools. He's going to be the king. That's a political figure. Jesus will be a political figure on the earth. He will sit on the throne of his father David for a thousand years, and we're going to come back and be on this earth for a thousand years. So this is why you shouldn't look at the wicked. As David said, when I, he said, before I went into the house of the Lord, I was angry with God about the wicked, how they prospered in everything they did. He says, but when I went into the house of the Lord and I discovered the end of the wicked, he said, I felt bad for them. I felt sad for them because they're going to die and we get another thousand years plus eternal life. Man, who wouldn't, who, that's a deal. Lord, you got a deal. <laughs> that's a, I'll take that any day. I'll take that any day. My name is Jerome Davis, and I, I played professional football, so if I don't remember something up here, you know, <laughs> no, nah, no. Nah. I believe the Holy Ghost is going to work with me. Thank God for my brother Mark coming here and assisting me, and Brittany is here. And, uh, just got a whole, got a whole, lot, of, whole lot of help. Uh, Brenda. That, that's a Brenda. <laughs> I'm not good with names. Just like my friend, uh, my friend, my good friend, Pastor and Bishop Santos. He's a good friend of mine. He's a great man of God. He told me, he sent me a scripture one morning out of the blue. He texted to me. He says, the Lord laid it in my heart to give you this scripture. And it's Proverbs 22, 28. And it says, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. And he says, so every morning you get up, I want you to pray this. So every morning I've been getting up and I've been saying that prayer that everything that I needed for my campaign and for my life, it's going gonna, it's gonna to measure up and it's going to manifest. So one morning out of the time, that's what it's been two weeks since you sent me that? I, I'm, I was going to miss one morning. I was in my car and I said, oh, hold on, let me, let me get, I pulled out my phone, read the text, and that was my prayer. And I was at the gym that very morning. I was at the gym, was working out, and me and this guy started talking about my run for Congress, and he was talking about how that, uh, you know, China is, is trying to run the world and all this stuff. And I said, man, you know what? You, you're good. He runs a business, he's, he's, he's organized. And I said, you can be my campaign manager. He says, when can I start? I was like, whoa, look at the Lord. Look at God. Look at God. So God is doing that. And, and, and so I've been doing that prayer, and he's establishing it. Listen to what Proverbs, and I want you to write this down, and I want you to post it on your social media. I want you to post it on your social media. I want you to go to Google Image, found, find the image of the empty shelves and post this scripture there with it. It says in Proverbs 12, 12, 29 and 2, this is what it says. It says, when the righteous rule, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. I want you to share that on your, on your media post. And uh, because it's so prophetic and it's so true. And I believe that this is just the beginning of it. And it's, and it's, uh, it's purposeful. It's not a mistake. It's not a mistake. This is on purpose. Because they want to rearrange what America is. Now, America is the last beacon of freedom in the world. And once they take away the, our freedoms, well, then they can take over the world. But not if you and I stand. Not if you and I start going back to work. Go back to work, America. Go back to work. Those people, they're hurting the businesses on purpose. So they'd rather pay you to stay at home to hurt the businesses. It's, it's the middle class that holds up America. 
the people who start the mom and pop stores, the businesses, and, and they're giving people jobs. And the, if you purposely take those away, well, then you've hurt America in a, in a terrible, terrible way. So I beg you, those of you who are watching online, encourage your family to go back to work. It, you, you feel better about yourself when you're working. You have a certain dignity about yourself. God designed us that way as he did in the garden. He gave Adam a job. Now, he was in paradise. Usually when people picture paradise, they picture themselves laying down and women feeding them grapes and all kinds of fruit. And you got a fan blowing on you and stuff. No, no, God put Adam in paradise and he said, now here's your job. We've got to work. Everybody say, we've got to work. So let's go back to work, America. We've got to fight it that way. And then we've also got to fight it by sending people like me to office. I love God. I've been preaching now for close to 30 years. I was pastoring in Northern California for 16 years. I've traveled the country preaching, and there's no scandals to me. There's no scandals on my name because I love God. People say, well, nobody's perfect. I say, well, I'm trying to be. I'm trying to be. Y'all say like per perfection is something that you should be angry about, but I, I, I actually want to be perfect. And it's kind of hard sometimes when I tell my daughter and my youngest daughter that I'm going to be there at a certain time, and I can't because I'm, I'm limited. I'm a human. I can only be in one place in one space at a time. So that's what I mean by imperfection there. But as far as morals go, you and I should be children of God and live a morally clean life and, uh, and represent the Lord. So I'm going to preach. Is that all right? Y'all ready for the word? I want to talk about God's wisdom in the cloud and how he keeps bringing you back. God's going to keep bringing you back. God's getting ready to do something for your life that is going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah. Some of you thought it was over. Some of you thought the things that you had planned were over. But God's got something awesome for you. I guarantee you, if you receive this word, God's going to restore you and send you back out there. Now, the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible, and it outdates the book of Genesis because the book of Genesis was written by Moses, who appeared on the scene probably 2,000 years after uh, the book of Genesis was written, or the beginning. So the book of Job is the oldest book that we will find, and in this book, we love to read it uh, because we can see a lot of things in the book of Job. We see and discover something unique about the kingdom of God. We, we learn divine sovereignty. We learn spiritual warfare. We learn Satan still has access to God's throne. We learn about God's angels. We learn about God's courtroom activity. See, there's a courtroom in heaven. And when you pray, you must see yourself petitioning God who is on the throne and, and Jesus who is on the throne, petitioning and interceding on your behalf. He ever liveth to make intercession for the saints. He is our attorney. He is our lawyer who pleads our case before the Lord. And this is why when you go in to pray, you pray to petition the Lord for a thing. A thing that you need in your life, a thing that your children need, uh, a protection, a safety, a need, a spiritual need, uh, uh, an insight, a word of wisdom, a word of protection. God will send all that. God has all of that for you, my, my brothers and sisters. God has wonderful plans for your life, and he will answer your prayer. Jesus talked about prayer being answered when he said, ask, seek, and knock. Ask, seek, and knock. Ask, and it shall be given. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. A seek and you shall find. In every stage of prayer, Jesus said, I guarantee you that it will be answered. Now, sometimes the answer to prayer is a no. God will say no. But in God's no, there is a great amount of grace that comes forth even when he tells you no in prayer. Moses besought God. He went over and saw the land of God said, I'm going to let you see the land. But you cannot enter it, Moses, because of what you did. Uh, and you, you disgraced me before the people at the rock Moriah. And he said, so therefore I will not allow you to enter into the land, but I will let you see it. So Moses comes back and he petitioned God for the third time. He says, Lord, I want to go into the land. Would you allow me to go into the land? He says, Moses, he says, I will not hear the matter again. He says, you're not going to enter the land. He said, but I, I've let you see it. And he says, now Joshua is going to replace you. 
That was God's grace to let him see it. Now, when, when, when Paul talked about his threefold prayer, he says, I sought the Lord thrice to, re to receive, to remove the thorn from my flesh. He said, but God told me, no, I'm not going to remove it. He says, but I'm going to give you grace to make it through it. And he says, so Paul, my grace is sufficient. When you feel like you can't make it and when you feel like discouraged and you think you're alone, always understand that my grace is with you. I favor you. I'm giving you my presence and can't nobody stop God. Nobody's bigger than God. Nobody greater. So the book of Job reveals to us how bad friends can be. Job had three friends, and he had an extra one that came along, the young one, Elihu, Elihu. then you had Elphaz, you had ba Baldad. I wouldn't have a friend named Baldad. Zophar, and they all came to comfort Job, but in comforting him, they accused him. You did something wrong. Yeah, you went through his divorce because you did something wrong. You went through this, you lost a job because you did something wrong. Yeah, God, God wouldn't let this happen to you unless you did something. But, but the Bible lets us know that God told Job and the friends, the friends were wrong, but Job was right. And I want to caution some of you that when you're just getting in your little scriptures and you're getting in your little battle with folks on Facebook and stuff and you're going back and forth with scripture, be careful about what you quote from Job. Because God said that Job's friends were wrong. And so you find some scriptures that Job's friend wrote, and then you put that on there. Well, you're wrong too. You have to be careful about doing that. But there's science in the book of Job. There's science. And we agree with science. The Bible agrees with science. God isn't against science. It's sometimes science goes against God. And when science goes against God, then we go against science. I believe God. I don't believe that the world is going to end due to a flood or a freeze or a great heat wave. I believe God's word was established when he sent out the rainbow after the flood and he said, as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time, harvest, scent, winter, and, 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 and spring and summer. So God says there's always going to be seasons in this world as long as I let the world remain. And here we have wicked scientists telling us unless we give our money and our freedoms and our guns to them, then the weather is going to be bad, huh? So I give you my money and my guns and my freedoms and all of a sudden you got a weather machine that makes the weather better? Get out of here. Are you crazy? You think we all dummies? You think we all fools? No, no. We all love God. We believe the word of God. We believe that God's word has established you ain't got no weather machine that's going to change the weather. They've been telling us stuff and telling us the world was going to end because of a flood. Uh, 2008, there was a movie, uh, 2012. And the movie 2012 pictured a catastrophe that was going to take over the world. It was going to be an earthquake and California was going to fall off because it's just, just so much fear mongering. But those of us who stand on the word of God said, no, though the earth quakes and the mountains be removed, God will always keep my feet in the right position. So I'm all right. Jesus told us that don't fear the one that can take your life. Fear he that can take your life and your soul. We shouldn't even worry about no death. Anyway, it's just a doorway to get me to where I want to be. And when I get there, I'm going to talk to my boy Job. Say, Job, man, why were you sweating? Man, why was you tripping? God was with you the whole time, brother. He's like, man, look, you've read that thousand years after the fact. He said, well, when you're going through it, you ain't going to feel like that. You know, you can always have somebody come up and give you a prophetic word when you're going through it, but when you give them one, they can't take it. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's just different when you're going through it yourself. And God wants you to go through it. And so, so we have science that backs up the book of Job, and Job backs up science. I believe in Job, the book tells us about uh, dinosaurs. I believe that there was dinosaurs. They called, and I believe that there were sea creatures and monsters because Job, God talked to them about who, uh, who controls the power of the behemoth. Now, the behemoth is the earth giant. That was their earth dinosaur. And the Leviathan was the sea creature. And so these were, these were monsters back in that time. And so it backs up science. And so, now, let, let's get into the book. I want to share the scripture with you from Job chapter 28, verse 25 and 28. Is that all right? Y'all still with me, right? 
let's see here, 25, verse 20, chapter 28, verse 25, and it says, this is Job talking, and he says this, when he established the force of the wind and measured out the waters, when God established the amount of the force of wind that it takes to keep a cloud afloat and the right buoyancy to keep the water remained in the cloud. God did all of that good stuff with the cloud. And he says, when he made a decree for the rain and a path for the thunderstorm of the thunder, the lightning, in Dubai, they found out that clouds need to be shocked. They need to be, they need uh, electricity in order for the clouds to release the rain. And so he talks about a pathway for the voice of the thunder. See, see, thunder is a result of the lightning. And it's, the lightning is moving at, at light speed, so it takes a minute. After you see the lightning flash, then a couple of seconds later, you hear the boom, boom. You hear the voice of God moving through the cloud. He's measured out the clouds where there would be a pathway for his voice to move up and down through the clouds. He wants his voice to go up and down throughout the clouds. And they, sound, they found out that when God sends electricity through the clouds, now the clouds release what they had in them. My friends, brothers and sisters, there's something inside of you that God wants to release this year. You've come into 2022 and you've decided that this is going to be the year that God is going to use you. Well, yes, you've got to wake up the voice of God inside and allow God to prophesy to you even while you're on your dream and you're dreaming, while you're sleeping and while you're on the work and while you're going to the job and while you're driving everywhere. You've got to allow a pathway for God to speak into your mind and into your situation and into your family. Yes. God wants to speak in order to release the giftings that he has laid in you before the foundation of the world. And then God, after he did this, he, then he said, and then he looked at wisdom. And then, and appraised it, and then he confirmed it. Yeah, it'll fly. And then he tested it. He looked at the cloud, stood back and looked at it and said, this is one of my baddest ones right here. Man, this thing is bad. This cloud thing is really bad. I mean bad meaning good. You take some wind, you take some water, and you take some dust. All three of them are very heavy, and yet it can fly. Man, tell me something, man. God is a bad dude. You take all of this weight of metric, metric tons, tons, heavyweight stuff. Even the air that it takes to hold it up has a weight. And yet God stood back and said, now that's wisdom. Which one of y'all can do that? Ain't, ain't nobody nowhere can do nothing like that. Ain't nobody in the world could do what God is doing. And I'm going to tell you something. Couldn't nobody do in your life what God has done. He took you off drugs. He took you out of the streets. You was messed up. You were torn up. You had depression. You was, you was t on alcohol and you was angry. You was bitter. But God took you and molded you and cleaned you up. And then he lifted you up and dusted you off. And now he stands back and look at you and say, you are a bad creation. I'm going to tell you what, every time you walk, I love to see you talk. I love to see you walk that walk. I love it when you praise my name. I love it when you lift your hands and give me the glory. I love it when you tell people that I brought you out when nobody else could bring you when nobody else could lift you that it was God that brought you out so God is looking at that he's giving God him glory look at what you did yeah I was depressed I wanted to kill myself but I went to God one day and he put something inside of me he put a piece of lightning and thunder down in my soul his word told me that I was somebody when I felt like I was nobody he brought me out he gave me a word he gave me joy he gave me peace and I put him the praise and God is looking back saying whoa look at that that's my right there that's mine that's mine even when it seemed like you have given all you could give like the clouds <laughs> they give all they can give and then they go off and the sun burns them away but just like the cloud God sends that same sun that burned it off and caused it to re, re 
evaporated again. Sun over the sea causes a steam and an evaporation. The dust mingles with the moisture, goes up and makes a cloud. God Almighty. And God is getting ready to bring you back just like that. And this is what he said in verse 28. He says, and he said to the human race, fear the Lord, for this is wisdom, and shun evil, for this is understanding. He said to the human race. The book of Job gives us this science. It gives us this teaching. But I want you to know and see yourself as the cloud. I want you to see yourself as the cloud because God, for some reason, did not want the cloud to leave the memory of man. God wanted man to see the wisdom that it took for him to make it and to retain it and bring it back and refresh the earth with it and to give you refreshing water with it. Yeah. So then in Job, in Genesis chapter 9, God uses the cloud again. He uses the cloud. He says in Genesis 9 verse 14, he says, after the flood, he said, Noah, he said, Noah, now I have put a witness in the cloud to tell you that the, I will never send a flood on the earth again. He put it in a cloud. In Exodus 24, verse 15, and the glory of the Lord abode upon the Mount Sinai, and a cloud overshadowed them for six days, but on the seventh day, God called Moses up into the cloud. He keeps pulling the cloud back in. In 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 10 and 11, and it came to pass when the priest came in into the place, the holy place, that the cloud filled the temple. And so much so that the priest could not stand to minister because the cloud. For the glory of the Lord had filled the house of the Lord. God just keep bringing this cloud back. He wants everybody to know that God, I just, this is one of my greatest creations. And I just cannot just let it be. So throughout scripture, Old Testament and New Testament, you will find the cloud. I want you to do an exhaustive study on it when you get home and look and see the tremendous Bible verses that contains the cloud. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 5, it says that while he was yet speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, the voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son, hear ye him. You see, God wants to manifest himself to mankind, but God cannot manifest himself because he's a spirit. He's a spirit. We can't see a spirit. But he wants to show himself, and when he usually chose to show himself, he showed himself through the cloud or as the cloud. When Israel was going through the wilderness for 40 years, and it was 40 years that God had maintained them and kept them, 40 years every day and every night for 40 years, it was a cloud that was over them that protected them from the heat of the sun during the day. But at night, God put a fire in the cloud to heat them up and keep them warm from the desert temperatures and to keep away the wild animals. And God, that was the way God was in the midst of his people. And when Moses was ready to talk to God and God was ready to talk to him, it was God who came down in a cloud and stood in the face of Moses' tent and talked to him face to face through a cloud. So when God is ready to speak to the world, who can he use besides you and me? When God wants to tell the world of a plan, of his kingdom, of his word and of his will, he can only use those who have, who have introduced themselves and put themselves into the kingdom of God to be used by God. You got saved, not just to jump and shout, and we love that. Oh, God, man, I, I do a Holy Ghost move with the James Brown kicks. But, but that ain't just kingdom. Now, we give God the praise, but that's not just kingdom. God wants to pick you up and to use you to go into someone's life and to reign on a dry ground with the presence of God's word, with the prophetic healing, with the word of knowledge, with the word of wisdom. God wants to use you. 
God's going to use you in a tremendous way. I feel it. I feel like God's hand is on this service today. I feel God is going to do something for somebody. Something's going to click in your mind that's going to help you to understand the marvel of God's work in your life. You're a new creature. You ain't what you used to be. You're not what you used to be. You shouldn't be thinking the way you used to think. Be not, trans, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the what? Renewing of your mind. Your soul got saved, but your mind needs a renewing. You see, when you got saved, you became a whole different creation. You, you're not... You're not what you used to be. And I'm not saying even spiritually, but you're not what you used to be physically. There's three types of flesh on the earth. There is the Gentile, there's Jews, and there is Christians. All right? There are Christians, Jews, and Gentiles. We used to be Gentiles before we got saved. But if any man be in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, he or she is a new creation. And your DNA has changed from what it used to be to making you a new creature. Listen, listen, scientists are today involved in changing of DNA. There was a, there was a story, there was a story on Yahoo uh, about three days ago stating that the mRNA is, is something designed to change the human genes because scientists thinks that God made a mistake and didn't give your DNA enough protection to protect it from viruses. It's quiet in here right now. But God is the master of DNA. God is the master of a cloud. And if he can make a cloud float in air, well, then he can keep me from a virus that's floating around. You understand? God knows about wind. He knows about viruses, even if they're human-made. Can I have an amen in here? I just need one amen. So God, so, so God changed your DNA because your body needs to respond to the call when he calls us up. When he says, come up hither, only new creatures is going to get that call. You're, you're, you're going to hear it. Is that a text or a tweet, Lord? Which one? Text or a tweet. When he's going to say, come up hither, boom, and you're going to be changed. Yeah, so they're trying to change us. But God is the only one that has the authority to do that. I only want God touching on me. And my wife when God sent me one. Or when I find one. But God is getting ready to do something for you. Something that scientists can't do. Uh, something that money can't do. Something that people can't do. God's getting ready to do something for you that's different. And he's getting ready to bring you back from where you used to be, yeah? Some of you Christians are going through depression. Some of you are going through anger, and you don't even know why. You're going through some places, and people have let you go, and they felt like you're not going to come back. But God's gonna, got a comeback plan for you. He's got a comeback plan for you, and that plan is going to be something phenomenal. It's going to be something that everybody can see. Yeah, they, they wrote you off. They let you go. They thought you was a nobody. They thought the drugs had taken you out, and they thought the bad relationship had taken you out. But I feel God pulling you back into the vision of people again. God is getting ready to bring you back into sight and he's getting ready to use you like he has never used you before. Yes. People said you couldn't do it. Well, God says, yeah, I put wisdom in you. You're going to do it. You're going to open up that business. You're going to have that successful job. You're going to have a successful family because my wisdom is in you. You are my cloud. Yes, scientists told the hummingbird. They told the bumblebee. They said, the bumblebee, you don't have wings enough to fly. Your body mass is too big for your wings. But the, bu the butterfly, or the, or the, the bumblebee says, hey, listen, not only can I fly, but I can make wax and honey with these things. I'm bad with these. You understand? I'm a priest with these things because God put wisdom in the wings of the butterfly. Scientists told the hummingbird that you're not supposed to fly with them little bitty wings and that ugly little body. But the hummingbird said, look here, let me tell you something. I'm the only bird in the bird kingdom that can fly backwards and upside down. Now what? And I'm here to tell you that God's about to put something fantastic in you. God's about to raise you up and give you the joy of the Lord. There's about to be a peace upon your life. There's about to be a power that's rising up in you that can't nobody figure it out. They can't figure it out because it's God's wisdom. 
that's working in you. Yeah, you were supposed to be dead. I was supposed to be six feet under, but it was God's wisdom and hand on my life that shifted me from what I used to be to what I am now. I am God's wisdom. I am God's cloud. And when you see me fly in, I'm coming in with the glory. I'm coming in with power. I'm coming in with the wisdom of God on my life. Shout to somebody and say, I'm, I'm the cloud. Oh, the scientists can't figure out what God has done to your heart. Uh, Satan can't figure out what God has done to your heart. Uh, the Bible lets us know that Job had a hedge around his heart. Uh, he had a fence around it that couldn't nobody see because it was an internal working of God the Father. God had put a fence around the spirit and soul of Job uh, that people couldn't see. They couldn't figure out why was this man so rich and so famous and got everything and he and I there balling real big but you know what he was balling real big for God he was loving God serving the poor helping the hungry helping the homeless helping the fatherless he was working for God because God had did an inside job on him science can't see that the world can't see that but when you start moving at God's wind when you start floating in like the cloud the world can see the refreshing they can see the power of God on your life they can see the wisdom that it took God to take you out of the nightclub and put you into church and give you a new song and a new dance. You used to be throwing them up for the devil. You used to throw them up for Jay-Z, but now you shouting hallelujah. Now you giving God the glory. You used to be bound by the drugs, but now you binding up drugs. You used to be bound by lust, but now you're binding up the lust. That is the power of God in your life. Shout glory. See, we're letting the rudiments of this world go so that we could be used by God the Father. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, you are the cloud. You are the cloud that God wants to use. Job said, listen, look at it, verse 28, and, and compare it to Job 1, verse 1, that Job said in verse 28, verse 8, chapter, chapter 28, verse 28, he said that this is wisdom, that men should fear the Lord and run from evil. You've got folks, even in the church, they run into evil. But whenever evil is present, folk run to it because they want to be involved in what's happening in the world. But you need to get so caught up in the things of God that you run to the things of God. You run to the house of God. Yeah, there's a virus, but God is my God. I shall not fear the arrows that fly by day, nor the pestilence that move in the nighttime. Because my God is with me, I won't fear no evil, for thou art with me. Your rod, your staff, they comfort me, and the virus cannot touch me. I'm going to the house of the Lord. Somebody say, in the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. And in the house of the Lord, I will praise his name. I will lift him up. I will give him the glory. I will bless him because he's brought me out. Go ahead on and high five somebody. Nudge somebody and say, I am the cloud. I am the wisdom of God. And I'm going to show somebody this year what God has done for me. I'm going to show somebody this year that God has put some water of the word inside of me. God has put the power of the prophetic inside of me. God has put the power of healing in me. He's put the power of his word in me. And I am going to show the world this year how great my God is. He reigns from heaven heaven above. He lifts us out of darkness, brings us into the marvelous light. He's a great and mighty God. High five somebody say he's a good God. Yes, he is. He's good. And that's why all the days of my life, I will be the cloud of the Lord. I will bring in his presence. I will heal and I will speak his word. Even in the midst of darkness, I will be the cloud of the Lord. Somebody shout glory to God. Hallelujah. The cloud is God's wonder. And in the book of Revelation, it was the cloud that brought in the last angel. The cloud is bringing in the presence of God. The world is experiencing a drought. 
I've, I've experienced a drought. I've experienced seeing a drought of real Christians. I have, you know what Jude said about them? He said, they're clouds without water. He said, they get over there and they, and they get over people and get hopes all high. They get their hopes high. Oh, I'm about to rain. I'm about to rain. I'm about to rain. I'm about to rain. But they never rain. They're clouds without water. But God's about to send a word of thunder through you. There's a word of lightning that's coming through you that's about to release the gifts, the wonders, the power, the glory, the joy, the peace, the power of God's kingdom on a dry and thirsty land. Lift your hands and say, let it rain, Lord. There's getting ready to be a rain in this land. Oh, yes, I know everybody's not going to say, yes, let it rain. But those of us who do, I feel the glory bringing you in. I feel the glory bringing you in. There's a sound of an abundance of rain. There's a sound of prophetic. There's a sound of a release. There's a sound of deliverance. There's a sound of demons being bound. There's a sound of children getting saved. There is a sound of God's kingdom. There is a sound of righteousness coming forth. There is a sound of peace moving moving in this land, and God's people are the clouds that's bringing in this change. Lift your hands, everybody, and shall let it rain, Lord. Bring the rain, oh God. Bring the power that I need. Yes, give me the glory. Hallelujah. 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 The cloud. Is about to be poured out over the desert. When God sends the rain and releases it, I'm telling you, it's going to be a change. Now listen, Genesis chapter 1, verse 2, verse 1 and 2, and the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the next verse, verse 2, they call it the gap theory. After God created it, then destruction came in the second verse. And the earth was void and without form. And the Spirit of God moved over the face of the deep. Now, he didn't move. He, he moved, but he didn't, create, he didn't correct anything yet because God hadn't spoken. He was like a cloud over the face of a destroyed earth. But he would not release his power until God spoke. And when the thunder of God's voice spoke and said, let there be, the Holy Ghost began to move in whatever God said, let there be. First thing he said, let there be light. Boom. I got to see what I'm getting ready to do on this. And it's like a doctor operating on you. Doctor said, I need more light. One of the nurses turned the light on. And he says, let the firmament divide. Something rolls up and then something stepped back. God's getting ready to take the righteousness that he planted in you. It's going to rise up, and the old stuff has got to step back. When God puts newness in you, he's got to take away the old and bring forth the new. God is bringing forth you a new desire, a new revelation, a new insight, and a new walk for a new kingdom in a new time, in a new year. You can't walk in old wineskins in a new year. God's got to take away the old stuff. He's got to take out the depression, take out the anger, take out the lies. Take out the deception and give you a new vision so that you can walk in newness. Somebody say, I'm new. I'm ready. I'm ready for the water. I'm ready for the water. I'm not, I don't want church as usual. I don't want just we come in and give God the praise and go home. I want you to be so watery when you get out of here that you leave water in your seat in your car. I want enough water all coming off of you that there's a, there's a drain of water riding down the street with you. I want water on the job. And when folks start getting water, they're going to be refreshed. There's going to be a changing. There's going to be a growing. And it's going to look like spring around you in a time of free fear, in a time of freezing. God is getting ready to bring it on your life. Somebody clap your hands and shout glory to God. I'm getting ready to get out of here now. But I want everybody under the sound of my voice to get ready for God to do something in you that he has not done before. I'm telling you that you make yourself available to God. 
and God will make himself available to you. Job was available to God, and God took Job and took him through some things. But in the end, God was making him ready and putting room in him for more than he ever had before. I'm here to tell you, child of God, God is ready to use you like never before. But God's got to get some stuff out of you first. We got to get some stuff out of here. We're going to let some stuff go. Are you ready to let it go? Are you ready to let it go? We're going to let it go. Everybody stand to your feet. And we're going to shout. I want, I want a shout of release in here. We're going to shout a, a shout that's going to release the rain, the voice of God. Lift your hands right now. Father, we thank you right now for the rain. We thank you for the voice of God that's operating in the land right now. And in their hearts, Father, I pray that you will get ready to release the sound or the pouring of an abundance of rain that you have stored in them. Or an abundance of joy, an abundance of revelation, an abundance of the peace of God, an abundance of the things of God right now. In Jesus' name, when I count to three, I want you to release it and give God the praise and let it rain in your life. Now, you ready? One, two, three. Shout a praise unto God. Shout unto God. Shout unto God. Come on, shout unto God. Shout unto God, the cloud. Atabo Sandro Bahai. Come on. Come on. Shout unto God. Shout unto God. I release the word of the Lord. I release the thunder of God's voice. I release the thunder of God's voice in your home, in your marriage, in your finances, on your mind, in your health. We find fear now. I release it now. I release it now. Oh, I feel it. Come on, open your mouth one more time. Come on, just let God pour into you. Just let him pour into you. Just let him pour into you. People of God, let God use you. This is your time. This is your season to be the cloud of the Lord. He's bringing you back. And just like the bumblebee, you wasn't supposed to do it. But you will exceed it. Just like the hummingbird, you weren't supposed to do it. But you will exceed it. In Jesus' name. This is how I fight my battles. Come on. This is how I fight my battles. Come on, you sing out. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight. Come on, help me say this out. This is how I fight my battles. Come on. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Praise the Lord. Come on, somebody. Listen, uh, we level off over here. I want those that have the liberty just to come up to. We always, it's a custom in our church to come to the altar. Amen. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be careful about how, how we pray for you. Come on, somebody. We are in a fight. Not to lose, to win. Somebody say amen. Your praise, your worship, you're receiving the word of the Lord. You know, the Bible talks about, again, in 1 Kings 18, that Obadiah hid some prophets in a cave. And he's talking about water. And he gave them bread and water. What I gather from that scripture, obviously, that's, that's natural sustenance, you know, food. But I don't read the scriptures that way necessarily because when I hear the word bread, Jesus is the bread of life. Bread is doctrine, revelation. And he gave him water. He's talking about water, which is a life source. Jesus is the rivers of living water. And this spirit of Jezebel, whatever, amen, is trying to hide the prophet in you. 
But shout with me, say, I'm coming out. I'm out. I've learned to trust God. I, I've, I've learned to trust God. Come on, somebody. I, I'm gonna, I have to do this. I have to do this. He knows I'm not preaching. I can't help the gift in me because I push you forward. I'm going to push you forward. I gave us, amen, before you come to this altar, in Zechariah Zachari 1, amen, in 21. If you read the chapter, listen to me carefully. This pertains to you and the season that we're in. The Bible says that in the midst of prosperity, amen, he talks about prosperity, which was a false sense of security for Israel at the time. Because the Bible says there were four horns, listen, four horns that were being blown against horns is the, the, the symbolism of it is, was this, is was, uh, uh, these were spiritual horns, horns. A horn comes from an animal, the sacrifice of an animal. He's mentioned that there's spiritual wickedness at high levels that are being sacrificed and blown against what? You. Watch, watch. There are four, say four horns. These are spiritual sounds. The Lord began to reveal this to me. I shared this with Wednesday because I, uh, to, uh, those that were here, because I want you to come with understanding after having received bread, the word of the Lord, because it pertains to us. Four horns against, amen, praise the Lord, against Judah. Say Judah. Judah in essence means praise. Your worship. This is why the church must not remain silent. Not just in church, but everywhere. When we Judah, Judah, we, we praise the Lord. The horns were speaking against the praise. It is a mystery. When the people, amen, when the praises go up, the blessings come down. The horns were blowing against uh, Israel, which speaks against posterity, position, Abba. When God changed Israel, he said, I'm, he had that encounter. He says, I will give you power with God and favor with men. He's talking about transformation. The horns are blowing against the change that needs to take place in your life. They're spiritual entities. That means your pastor, your position is your entrepreneur self, your father self, your grandpa self, your mother self. God wants to bless Redeemer Apostolic Church. The horns, say four horns. They're spirits that are blowing against Jerusalem, the house of bread. The how it, it speaks against your amen, the, your peace. When God began to reveal this to me, bitch, amen, Pastor. This is what I want to read. It. Amen. When you wake up, because you are dealing with very high level ranking spirits that want to shut the preacher mouth out of you. Can I say it like that? Your declaration to stand for righteousness. Come on, somebody. Oh yeah, so now I see this in the spirit. There are horns that are blowing against your life, against Redeemer. I shut them down by the power of God. I walk in revelation. No, this is how you shut them down. You women, when you don't want to praise God, praising God, Judah, Judah, is more than just shouting. This is not a church activity. You create the atmosphere. You create the atmosphere to your praise. Horns, horns, amen. So when I wake up in the morning, I see there are horns that are blowing against every believer. Let's shut them down. By the power of God, we shut down every horn that is blowing against my praise, against my word. I shut the mouth of every horn that is blowing in the spirit against my posterity, my position to rule and to reign. I push you forward uh, prophetically with wisdom, knowledge, and understanding so that when you speak, uh, you will blow the shofar, the praise of the Lord. 
the horn of my salvation. Redeemer Apostolic Church, it's the time to rise up in power with glory. I speak against those horns, four of them. Uh, amen. And number four is very significant because it speaks to the elements of the world. It is wind, it is uh, uh, fire, it is rain, and water. The four elements of the world. You understand? We are facing this, but somebody raise your hand and say, like Elijah, I have command over the four elements in my life. I speak to the ground. The rocks will speak on my behalf. So where there is a, a carving of idols and witchery that is being formed through the amen in the, uh, in the secret places of devils, uh, I cancel them. I speak to the earth. Uh, it must produce in my life. Uh, I speak to the wind. There is an abundance of rain. Uh, you ought to get ready because it's coming. It's coming. It is here. Make a difference. Amen? Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. 
And I just want to thank God for our, our pastor here today. Praise the Lord for being such a blessing to us with the insight that God has given us. You know, there's something, an element that the bumblebee you left out. It's its weapon. It stings, baby. Amen. Don't let me land on you. I'll put you out for a season. I know I'm sweet, but I'm dangerous. Praise the Lord. Somebody say, I'm sweet, but I'm dangerous. God is a good God, right? Amen. Can we, can we make one last prayer? Before we, uh, we have to get ready for the third session, praise the Lord. I need the ushers to please come. Um, it, but we're going we're gonna, to, it's a custom for us to be givers. Somebody say give. Uh, we're at the level of maturity in our walk with God that we are not using gimmicks to get you to give. Um, and that's, you know, when you walk with wisdom and understanding, you just respond to uh, the message, the command. Uh, you let the Spirit of God lead you, your heart dictate your steps, let your mind don't overthink it. You learn to obey God. Um, one of the blessings that God has given us here, or the grace, is that we have always tried to do our best in being generous to pastors or visiting preachers. And, I, uh, and so next week we're going to have another guest speaker. I, I mixed up the speakers, but you're going to be doubly blessed. Amen. But I want us to give. Can we pray for, uh, I want to pray for this offering. Yeah, we're, we're going to shut this play. Praise the Lord. We're going to uh, give you an opportunity to give. So if you want to go back to your chairs and give, uh, the ladies will be back there. Praise the Lord. I want you to give. Now, can we pray? Listen, um, we're not, we're almost, just give me 30 seconds, please. 30 seconds, kids. Um, uh, we need to really pray for Brother, Brother Hudson. Can we do that right now? Come on, please. Can we pray right now? Don't leave it up to me. It's us. Father, I pray for Bishop Hudson right now. And I declare by the power of God that you cause his cognizance, his ability, amen, to process and to wake up. I pray, God, that you will strengthen his body. And I cancel every spirit and effect of the sickness, COVID, sugar, diabetes, and the various complications that he might be having. Nothing is impossible for you. And I also pray for Sister Judy that you also heal her, give her the grace. And all those, amen, who are feeling these symptoms, God, I bind the spirit of fear to every and to all of it. And I declare a quick recovery healing in Jesus name can you give would you come up can you walk up can you give can you give can you give show yourself that you can give uh, praise the Lord and also uh, everybody should be walking up here if you have you don't have any cash please go to the kiosk the ladies are back there raise your hands ladies amen praise the Lord go back there and let's give I'm kind of jealous. Amen. Only two people came up. I'm a little bothered about that. Amen. We don't have any money. Somebody say, I have no money. Yes. Oh, you're texting it, right? You're texting it. You're mailing it. It's via email. You put it on your jet. Praise the Lord. Do something. Wait a minute. Let's go ahead and pass the offering bag. Let's go. Maybe they're afraid. Pass the offering bag, please. Maybe you're just hiding it for a little bit. God bless you. I, my blessing is to those that are wanting to give. I pray for the rest of you. God bless you.